Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today's video is going to be an unboxing, not done one of those for a while and I've been doing some drunk eBaying and Amazoning. So we have some boxes that have turned up, I've got three to open. Um, I think I know what's in some of them, I'm expecting one of them to have some kind of livestock in it. Um, I was expecting a lot more than this but we'll see what we've got today. But let's start with this one, I think this is what I've I think I know what this one is. This is something I got on Amazon. All the links will be in the description below if I remember to do it. And if I don't remember to do it, remind me and I'll do it. Um, this was on offer on Prime Day. I think it's... I'll try and put all this up here, but I think it was about £40 and it was reduced to something like 25 And I got my first ever Amazon affiliate um, payment. So I've been doing this for a couple of years now, I'm finally qualified for a payment. So you guys bought me this in effect and all you do for that is you click the links in the description and if you buy anything off Amazon I get 5 pence or something like that. So this is very plain packaging. So this is the Nicru Planted Tank LED. It just comes in a plain box. You get a remote control, you get a power supply, this is just your little barrel type thing, and you get the light itself. Now I think this light, if I remember rightly, I'll have to look this up. This is the 22 to 35, no, 22 to 34 inch um, version. Now I've used Nicru before, I've got a lot of their cheap LED lights. And to be fair, they've been fine. Um, this one is going to be, hopefully, to replace the light that's on my planted tank in the fish room at the moment, because we had a bit of a, a bit of an accident there. Okay, so what we've got, you've got your standard light with some buttons on it for mode and some timer buttons. So I'll need to do some reading of the instructions, and I guess this is the LED or the receiver for the remote control. It's got day and night modes, you can set all kind of timer options on that as well. Didn't even realise it had that. Um, but yeah, I bought this one, it was on Prime Day. And quite cheap. Hmm, so that looks pretty good. So we'll go and fit that shortly. But first we'll go on to box number two. It's quite sturdy as well. Usually you can bend them almost in half. This is pretty strong. So far, so good. Second package, I'm not entirely sure what this is. This arrived today. This is a brown box. Ah, right. This is a new sump pump. Now this is one of the new um, Giebo, Giacod, it's the, the reason I bought this is because it has the sine wave technology which is meant to be a lot more energy efficient, a lot more, a lot quieter and a lot more effective. So this is the 8000 litre per hour version from a big display tank because the pump in there gave up the ghost and it's just been running on a little piddly pump, backup pump at the moment so but I shall get a replacement for that. So in this one you get obviously the controller where you can set the intensity of the pump and the pump itself which is quite small really for what it does but it's kind of the upgrade from like a normal DC pump that you would get um, so I guess we'll fit that in a little while and see how well that does so this was about 80 quid uh, again linked in the description blah 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 so it's not the cheapest one I could have got but I don't really want cheap I want good um, it's also not the most expensive one I could have got, but we'll see how we go with that. And then the last package, which should be something that's hopefully alive, is in here. And I can tell that it's... So I can feel the water. Now, this could be shrimp, it could be fish. I went on a bit of a spree the other day and went, yeah, let's buy that, bid on that, bid on this. Bid on way more than I thought I was going to. 
Uh, yeah. So this is the shrimp. So we'll see how well these are packaged compared to the way I package shrimp. So on the thing, red crystal shrimp. Now they've just missed all the really, really, really hot weather that we've had here, so hopefully that won't have been an issue. That box is well sealed. I got these off eBay, just wanted to try something else that wasn't necessarily cherry shrimp for quite a while, but never quite got round to it. The prices at the shops I thought were a bit steep, so I saw these on eBay, I thought they looked reasonably well priced. These are from Shrimp World on eBay, so thank you very much for that. And they come with some instructions on how to acclimate them. Turn off the lights, float the poly bag in the aquarium for 30 minutes, gently add some water to the bag and reseal. After a further 20 minutes, gently release the livestock into the aquarium and leave the lights off for another hour. I do like it when they give you instructions and tell you what to do, so you can follow them, and if it doesn't work, you can get back to them. We've got some newspaper. No heat pads or anything, but I don't think that's necessarily required at this time of year. So some newspaper and a big bag of tin foil. Inside the tin foil we have packing paper. Inside the packing paper, more tin foil. It's like a Russian doll. Or a game of pass the parcel. I'm not sure why tin foil. It doesn't have the greatest of heat preserving properties. Bubble wrap or something maybe, but not tin foil. Ah! So there should be five shrimp in here, and I can see one, two, three, four, five. And when I send out shrimp, I put a little bit of java moss or something in the bag. These are put this little bit of gauze, I guess it is. And then a little bit of sponge up there as well. Well packaged, double bagged, 50-50 volume for water for oxygen, and they look pretty good. They're all bright. Quite often when you buy shrimp and they've been mailed, they'll be very pale um, because of the stress of shipping, but these ones are quite bright already off the bat. So as these are alive, we'll concentrate on these first and get these floating, like they say, in the tank. So I'll be back in a minute. So while I've got those shrimp acclimating, we'll have a look at this pump. So like I say, this is the Jabo, Jabo, J-E-B-A-O, I never know if it's Jabo, Jibo, or anything like that, but Jabo DCW8000. So it's an 8000 litre uh, pump, which is more than I need, but it does come with the controller and that can be stepped back. Don't know whether it's still true these days, but they used to always say, always get something that's more powerful than you need, turn it down and you'll make it last longer. So that's the idea anyway. It comes with um, quite a comprehensive set of attachments. We've got nozzles, 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 nozzles. Seems to be two of everything, which is always good. And then you've got the controller itself. Um, so as you can see there, you can ramp it up or down on the power, and then you've got a feeding or a water change button. So basically you press that, and it gives you 10 minutes for the pump off and you can feed your fish or do a water change or whatever you need to do and then it'll kick back in so you don't forget about it. So, very good idea. Like I say earlier, the main reason I got this is because of the power consumption and the noise. So I wanted something that wasn't going to cost the earth to run. It's a lot of these cheaper ones, you'll see, I can get pumps that do 2,000 litres or even four or 5,000 litres for like 20, 30, 40, 50 quid. But the wattage and the power draw from those is enormous so after a couple of months you'll end up paying way more than you would be getting something a bit more like this not saying this is the best one out there like I say this one cost me 80 pounds I think but it's the sine wave technology that is the research that I have done I won't pretend to know everything about this but essentially these are DC pumps so direct current but the power supply is AC and in the older version of these that meant that the controller was doing that conversion which could lead to a bit of whine and a bit more noise. It's still quieter than most pumps but it would be a little bit taxing on the mechanics 
and a little bit noisy, whereas this is meant to have true sine wave conversion, which makes it a more rounder power conversion, silent, less power draw, longer life. That's the three main components that made me pick this one. So, it should be very simple and straightforward to get this um, all hooked up, so let's go and have a go. We'll take it through to the display tank and see if we can get it done before we're ready to do the next stage of the acclimation of the shrimp. Follow me. So this is the pump we're replacing. It's my old faithful workhorse. Um, I really don't know what the problem was, but basically that sat in there like so. Sucked in water, pumped out water. This was an old, I think this is a J-Bow pump as well. Um, I've had it for years. I had two of them. Served me well. It was not noisy, but it's quite big and bulky in comparison to this one, which is a lot smaller. So that's good. This did draw quite a bit of power as well. Don't tell my wife that. At the moment, I've just got a little temporary pump in there. Um, I'll show you that. I don't know if you can hear the, it's quite noisy. So given that that's quite a low capacity pump as well, the amount of noise that it puts out and the amount of power that draws more power than this. So that gives you an idea. So we'll get that swapped out. So the first thing to do is turn that off. That'll let the water draw down from the display tank, fill this up, and it should just be a case of swapping it out at that point. Um, I need to find one of these hose adapters that fits into that hose there. Well, that's actually my water change pump that I used in, a, in an emergency. So this is a two and a half thousand litre pump, but it's kind of pathetic. I think it's two and a half thousand litres if you have zero head height, but yeah, not very good. Perfect for water changes and in an emergency, so that's fine. I can go back to its backup job. And what we need to do is find something. So this is the end of the hose going back into the, there and that just happens to fit perfectly. So we will take this output and put it onto the pump. So it's as simple as popping that into the, the screw on bit and dropping everything. So it's simple as that. You only want to get it hand tight, otherwise you risk cracking something. I'm sure you wouldn't. But it's got a little rubber seal inside there as well. Get that as tight as I want it. I think I'm going to try and put the... So we've got the controller here. It comes with a little sticky pad for you to attach it. I think I'll try and attach that there, just so that it's a bit easier to access and route the cables through and over there. So I'll come back when I've done all that. So there we go, it's uh, plumbed in. It was dead easy, just slotted it straight in. I've routed the cables for the power through to here and put the controller box here. So it should just be a case of turning the power on. So let's try that. That's a good sign. It's definitely working. So what we should see now is the water level and sump drop away down and then we begin the sump fiddling. So while that happens, basically what you have to do is match the flow rate and the, the turn rate. So I'm going to start off by putting this down to about 50%. And see how we get on from there. For su further sump fiddling, I've got this valve down here that I can tune either way to get it running silently because your sump should never make a noise. At least that's what I believe, anyway. So there we go, it's running on my horrifically neglected display tank. Got all that algae. Oh, there's one of the autos. It's your job to get over there, start cleaning this stuff. But anyway, there's the pump running. Absolutely silent, can't hear a thing. Couldn't have asked for anything better. So still some fiddling to do on this side. 
you just need to make sure we're matching the, the flow rate. So that's it, it's on 50% at the moment. It's already way outperforming what this one was. And silently as well. So, job done, let's go and sort out those shrimp. Right, so we had a bit of an issue with the shrimp um, acclimatization. So I did the 20 minutes in the double bag. Uh, and when I came to, that's well, they're in this tank, I came to add the water, like they said, I had to take off the outer bag, and it turned out the inner bag had a leak. So that started peeing water away there, so I had to do a bit of an emergency drop and plop. So they've been in there, they've been in there about 20 minutes now. Uh, so I've just turned the lights back on so we can go and have a look at them and see if they're okay. Well, they were five minutes ago, so I hope they still are. We've got five of these red crystal shrimp. They're living in what used to be the um, bristle, bristle nose pickle tank. So there's still plenty of mulm over there that these two are munching away happily into. Um, and thousands of snails. So they seem to be doing all right. They've got even brighter, if anything, in that first just a few minutes since being in there. They're looking great. I've seen them moving around. There's another one over there. It's not going to focus on properly. So, hopefully they will have a female in there somewhere and we can get them breeding and growing on. They're very, 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 very small. So I think it'll be a while before we get any breeding action out of them. So I've got one, two, three, four over there, and fives behind the filter somewhere. So hopefully all this mulm will be good for them. Um, I'll drop in a couple of algae wafers and things to keep them going. But yeah, let's leave them to it and hopefully we'll be good to go. So oh, next job is replace this light. So this is the planted tank, which looks a bit dark as you can probably tell. Because, do you remember a while ago, a few videos back, I showed you how to mount one of these lights up here using my fantastic duct tape method. It still is fantastic, but should you ever reach behind there to try and grab another cable, just do it carefully, otherwise, like me, you'll accidentally dump it and it'll fall in the water and it'll knock out half the elements. So, this light's garbage now and that's going to be replaced by the new Nicru one, which is a hell of a lot smaller. So. I don't know if this is actually going to work. Actually breaks everything. But you know when you see lights, they say, oh yeah, it fits X to X um, dimensions. Normally, um, so these bits, God, stop breaking things, Graham. Anyway, so normally these bits are what extend. These ones extend for miles and miles and miles, which is why I think they get away with such a big range of what they fit. But anyway, I shall get it set up on that tank, turn it on, it's got some fancy features apparently, and we'll see how it does. So I've fitted the light, well I'm just going to balance it there for now, I'll do some more shoring up later, but as you can see, it's very bright when it's on its brightest setting, and it has loads of extra settings, so it comes with this remote that I showed you earlier. So if you notice now, it's ramping down, so I've pressed the demo button, um, where the, the lights turn cooler and then they ramp down and eventually it'll go off and then in the morning when you set the time for it to come on they start to ramp back up again so it's a slow rather than a bang awake daytime you get a bit more of a um a bit more of a curve to the lighting coming on you can see it stepping down there every now and again um, but as well as that you've got so night light daylight full daylight you've got thunderstorms and sunny clouds which is essentially it just dims for a few minutes every now and again and everything in between so you can control the whites red green and blues you can set some manual programs on it and you can set lots of different timing schedules as well so there's lots more to be discovered with this thing so far i'm really impressed with it it's a bit small i think but it does adequately light up the tank probably um, but what I want to do is do a lot more playing with this and see if I can get some schedules and we'll come back and visit it in another one. But so far, really solid construction, it's no flex in it, no bend. Um, 
seems fairly intuitive to use and has lots of options so hopefully that will be a good thing. It claims to be full spectrum um, but I'll put a link in the description, go and check it out for yourself if you want and see if it's any good. But for now, it is so hot in here, I hope you've enjoyed these unboxings. Hopefully these shrimp will be doing okay. Um, click that subscribe button and then you can come and check out and I'll do some updates in the future. See you next time. Bye.